Hey everybody, this is round two of my playthrough of the Trouble in Sandpoint scenario within the Rise of the Rune Lords adventure path of the Pathfinder adventure card game. Sioni has just successfully closed off the Glassworks location, so that's one less location we have to worry about. That's nice. Of course, we spent a lot of timer cards to get down to no cards, but that's fine. We have three other locations to explore. And one of those is the village house, which I think is probably, well, definitely, the least threatening of the three remaining. And I, my, my logic here is maybe send Valeros and Sioni here to kind of maybe bolster their draw decks and, I don't know, see what happens. So let's read up on the village house first. Although a far cry from the mansions of wealthy nobles, or the keeps of powerful lords, this cozy house has the look of a comfortable and reasonably well-kept home. Warm light pours from the windows, gilding the silhouettes of the occupants going about their lives inside, and colorful bird feeders and wind chimes give it a bit of personality. So, I mean, it sounds like a nice enough place. Let's see what horrible environmental effects it has. When attempting a check to acquire an ally, you may instead recharge a card to automatically acquire the ally. Wow, this is a great place. Okay, uh, to close this, banish a card. I don't really see... Yeah, this is a great place to be. This is good. Okay, so it's Valeros' turn. We need to turn over a Blessings card, and then he can come into contact with something, and it's a long spear, which of course he'll be able to acquire because he is using his melee, I think, right? Melee or just strength? No, strength and melee for the spear. So he's got an automatic plus three for his melee skill, so he only needs to roll a two on, on the d10. He rolls an eight. He acquires a new a new card. Um, he can't do really anything, unfortunately, right now. I think he has, actually has to recharge, uh, discard. That's the worst thing about acquiring something, is you have to discard stuff. Okay, so I guess, you know, I, I've never been... Well, you know what? Okay, what does this spear do? It, uh, we reveal it for a d8. So that's the equivalent of a long sword, really. I I liked having the short bow because then he has the option of going ranged. If I if I get rid of the potion of hiding, he'll just all be he'll be all weapons practically. But yeah, I guess that's what I'm gonna do. Get rid of the potion of hiding for now. It's painful. Painful to do that. And he can't do anything else, unfortunately. He doesn't get any free... He has no cards to get, like, free turns or anything. Uh, I don't think I've drawn up for Sioni. I've not. One, two, three cards back into her hand. Okay, cool. Alright, so that's his turn. So now we'll just f flip over to Sioni, and she'll... She'll join him in this location. She was at the glass house, of course, the glass works, of course, but now she's here. And she looks, and it's a spell. Wow, that's a perfect encounter for her. So this is an arcane check six for a new spell, potentially. Um, so once again, just like Valero, she's got that natural uh, bonus. She has a plus two to her arcane. And then her arcane die is a d12, so she needs to roll a four on a d12. Two, so that is a fail. It's really too bad because she really, honestly needed. I feel like she needs more attack spells, so it's too bad that she didn't get this one. Maybe next time, because I'm always afraid of that timer deck. I'm gonna get rid of, I guess, the blessing of Lamash two. Or maybe the Blessing of the Gods. Yeah, I think I'll just get rid of the Blessing of the Gods, actually. Discard that to explore again. 
and great, it is an ally. So there's that global effect here of when attempting to get an ally, you may instead recharge a card. It doesn't say which card, it's just a card. So I'm going to recharge the stupid Blast Stone that I keep saying that I don't like, but boy are they handy sometimes. So I've just recharged that. Auto-acquire the Night Watchman. Okay, so now we're back to her turn. And of course she can just discard this Night Watchman to explore again for free. So this is, again, this is the strategy of not using the timer deck, but still burning through your um, the location deck. So this is an Attic Whisperer. So this little cozy house had some haunting in it. Before the encounter, each character at your location must succeed at a Wisdom 4 check or be dealt one mental damage, which may not be reduced. Players must choose a blessing to discard if they have any. Okay. All right, let's take a look at what we've got going for us. Not a whole lot, really. So that's a 10 to beat this thing. So she has nothing really to help combat this thing. She has to take a damage, so she's got to get rid of a blessing if possible, which was possible, so she did. Oh wait, she doesn't have to do that yet. What am I talking about? They get a check. They get a saving throw. Okay, so she has a wisdom of a d6, and Valeros has a wisdom of a d4 plus 1. So Valeros succeeds. No. What is this check for? Wisdom 4. Yeah, okay, cool. So he does succeed, because he rolled a 4 on a d4, and he has that plus 1 anyway. So now it's uh, Sione's turn, so uh, she needs to get more than a 4 on a d6. She got a 4. So neither of them take the damage. That's nice. I think what I'm going to have her do is cast Invisibility, which can just be recharged because she's a sorceress. And now it's Valeros's opportunity to attack this creature with something. And it's really just up to me as to what he should go with. He's got a, he, he could do two D10. He could do a D8 and a D6. That seems kind of silly. Or a D10 and a D8. Well, um, I think it's pretty clear that the Bastard Sword's the best option there. So 2d10 to get a 10, except, of course, that he has that plus 3 bonus because of his melee skill. So really, he's, he, all he needs on these 2d10s is a 7 to defeat this creature. A total of 7. So that's a 2, not a great start. And that is a 9. Great finish. So he obviously has defeated the Attic Whisperer. All right, so... She could actually discard this blessing to continue drawing, but I am going to not do that. I am going to draw back up to six for her, and end her, it, by, thereby ending her turn. Flip over a timer card. It's Valeros's turn now. Is he still... he's got all of his cards? Yeah. So, explore. Okay, cool. This is an ally. This is an ally. So, because of the global rule, or the, yeah, the, the local rule, I guess, of the village house, he can recharge a card. Doesn't say which one, so I think I'll do the long spear. Put that at the bottom of his deck. And auto-acquire the burglar. Can he discard this card to explore? No, he cannot. So that's all he can do this turn. Alright, so I'm going to flip over a card. And it's Sione's turn, so she'll explore. Potion of Ghostly Form. This is uh, Intelligence to Acquire. It's a 4, so she has a fighting chance to, to roll. A four, but she doesn't. She rolls a three. So the potion of ghostly form. I've, I'm pretty sure I've had this like, well, at least twice. Possibly three times in this game, and I keep not getting it. 
So does she have any recourse? Any anything to do? I mean, I guess she could discard the blessing of Lamash to, to explore again. I think I might do that. So she'll explore again. Battered chest. Well, this could be possibly good because, as I've read in the rules now, uh, Valeros can help with this check. That's just how it works, apparently. Uh, so. If defeated, 1d4 random items from the box into your hand. And and the thing about Valeros is that he's got this burglar. And the burglar uh, can add a 1d10 to a disable check. And one of the checks here is... Oh, it's not... Dis yeah, dex dexterity disable. So that's 1d10 from 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 Valeros. And a D8 from Sioni. And what is this? Is this discard? No, it's just recharge. Wow, that, that burglar is actually quite good. So he's uh, he rolled a 4 for the D10, and then a 5 for the dex out of a required 10. So that is unfortunately undefeated. So it is gone. So it ate up our turn. And we get we we got nothing out of it, even with a D10 boost. That was kind of painful, to be honest. Um, don't don't tell me that I have something. No, I don't. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So there was really nothing to be done there. That was just how. That's how that hand was meant to. That turn was meant to go. Going back up. To six for Sioni. Does oh well, Valeros doesn't get to draw back up because this is the beginning of his turn. So we'll flip it back over to Valeros and flip a timer card and explore. This is an ally, so Valeros can free gets to, to use a um, recharge a card to auto acquire because this location says he can, so he's acquired that ally. And predictably, I'm going to discard the ally to explore again. And that's the last, the last card of that location. And oh boy, it's the villain. So I think this is the first time I've encountered a villain before all the decks were whittled down. So this is a whole new process, probably. So when you encounter a villain, and there are open locations, whether or not you defeat that villain, the villain doesn't die. The villain escapes to an open location. And, possibly, takes cards off of your timer deck. So this is really horrible. Uh, really bad timing, I think. Maybe not, who knows. Okay, so it looks like this is a complex kind of encounter here, so... No, it's not that bad. Okay, so combat 14. I guess that's not that bad. Before the encounter, choose a character at your location to summon and encounter a wrathful sin spawn henchman. Okay, it is that bad. If undefeated, succeed at a wisdom. Okay, well, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So... Before we can even face this villain, we must instead summon a Wrathful Sin spawn. Okay, so, it's so Valeros. Valeros is up. He's got his bastard sword. So he's going to have a plus three to defeat this thing. Uh, before the encounter succeeded, a wisdom six check or the difficulty goes by... Okay, so this is a ten to defeat the Sin spawn. He's got a three head start, and then he's got two d10 to try to finish it off. So really we're shooting, all told, for a seven across two d10. That's a one. And a nine, thank goodness. So that defeats the sin spawn. So, great. That's, that's fine. Now we need to defeat this, uh, this villain. And that's going to be a 14 in combat, which is quite a lot, really. But not 
outside of the realm of possibility. Unfortunately, really all we have is that bastard sword. But remember that Valeros can discard, can choose to recharge instead of discarding. So natively, like naturally, this gives him to th this gives him a D10 in addition to his his strength die. However, he can additionally he can discard this weapon to add yet another D10. So that would mean that he's going to be rolling 3d10 to defeat this villain instead of 2d10. And he's also got his melee bonus anyway. In other words, after all the math is done, he's now shooting for an 11 across 3d10. It's not a guarantee, but it'll defeat the villain so that we don't lose cards from our timer deck. Hopefully. Okay, so a 2. Not a great start, obviously. Uh, that's better. That's a 6. Uh, so that's 9, 10, 11. So we need to roll a, really a 3 or better on this d10. And we got a 5. So, defeated the villain, except that there are open locations. And when there are open locations, what you do is you count how many open locations there are, and in this case, there are two. You add a blessing from the blessing deck, from the big blessing deck, not not your, not the uh, not the timer deck, but your your boxes, blessings blessing deck. So this is a new blessing in this scenario that wasn't there before. And then you do sort of a quick shuffle, and you try to look away, and I'm putting it behind my back so that I'm really, really, really honestly losing track of which is which and so then i'm going to just put one in there one in there and so now the villain is in one of those two decks i'll have to shuffle now to ensure that um that that villain is you know randomized and who knows i mean is the villain here at the blessing of lamashtu and see now now also keep in mind um one of these two, well, both of these decks has henchmen in it as well. So now we we won't know. If we encounter a henchman previously, we could have said, oh, a henchman is at this location, therefore the villain couldn't possibly be at that location. And we can no longer say that for sure, because now one of those two decks has the villain in it and a henchman. And the other one has a henchman and a blessing. Okay, so anyway, we're out of cards at the village house to... uh to close this location, we have to banish a card. Banishing means sending back to the box. That's the worst thing ever. But I guess I'll get rid of the shield. I hate to do that. But I wasn't going to get rid of the bastard sword, that's for sure. So he'll draw back up to, to, to three. And uh, that closes the location. So that's yet another location closed, meaning that we only have two locations left. And it's really a flip of the coin, I think, in terms of which one we want to go to. Although, I mean, that said, the Catacombs has six monsters in it, and the Shrine of Lamashtu has three, but it has this local rule where for every encounter, for if you, if you encounter a blessing in the Shrine, you are dealt two points of mental damage. So both of them end in pain. Uh, I might just let the dice decide. And I guess I'll do that next time. I'll, I'll let the dice decide who, which location we're going to go to next. Of course, it'll be Sioni's turn. How are we looking on the timer deck? We're looking pretty good on the timer deck. So I think, I think in this scenario, possibly, the great danger is health rather than the timer deck, which is a great place to be because I, I feel like they're in both they're they're both pretty good places in their health. So, yeah, we'll we'll pick up next time and see where we go. Thanks for watching.